Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Spoken Minds. It's your boy, Ike Barron. Look, my man, Chris Jones, couldn't be in today. Uh, family emergency. So we got a special guest to take his spot for the day. It's my boy, Drew. Drew know nothing, Drew. <laughs> What's Don't What's know happening? nothing about no sports, Drew. That's my guy. <laughs> This is my favorite man, Ike, right here. What's up, fellas? Thanks for glad you're having me. Uh, glad to be here. Much appreciated on the invite. Oh, yeah, man. You know, I figured if I'm going to argue with somebody, let me argue with an Eagles fan. My man. My <laughs> man. I always love to argue with Ike. All right, man. Well, let's get into the first topic let's of the day, man. The first topic of the day is going to talk a little bit about the 2020 and the 2021 NFL Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, yes, sir. 2020 has some has some nice names, man. It's pretty good, man. Look, Edron James, Troy Polamalu, Isaac Bruce, uh, Jimmy Johnson, and uh, Bill Cowher. Mm-hmm. Two big name coaches, big name, man. Big name coaches. Two big name coaches. Uh, I don't know if you've seen any of the speeches, but uh, Edron James's speech, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Man, I was definitely digging that one. My man came out and was talking about how when he first, you know, was going into the league, how he was being dogged out about his dreads and his gold teeth and how people was doubting him and th- saying he would never make it. And the man finished the speech by saying, I came in with gold teeth and I'm going out with a gold, gold jacket. jacket. Woo! <laughs> buddy I mic. said man look I felt that to the core only because man like I don't have the gold teeth but you know I got the tattoos and man I know about how how it is to be judged uh he also said this and I felt it to the core you know just because he looks a certain way people look down on him until they found out he had never been arrested never been in any kind of trouble like that And I'm the same way, man. Like, I've never been arrested, never been in trouble. But people look down on me because of my tattoos. They automatically thought gangbanger, drug dealer, all that type of stuff, man. So I really felt that, man. Uh, That whole don't judge a book by its cover, Sam, with you two gentlemen right there. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Man, I... Even though I don't like the Steelers, man, I was glad to see Troy Polamalu get in, man. Uh, that guy you. was a damn animal, man. He uh, all over the field. He be everywhere. Um, just because this guy is from the division that your boys are in, the NFC East, what you think about old Jimmy Johnson? Man, he deserved it. It was a long time coming. Uh, I was real glad to hear uh, recently that Jerry's going to put him on the Ring of Honor in Dallas, too. Uh, shout out to Hot Dog, he can tell you, too. That's a long time coming on that one. Uh, Jerry and Jimmy had that beef going back to Superman draw days. Uh, glad to see they're finally reconciling that in their later years in their life. Yeah, man, that man should have been in a Ring of, ring of Honor a long time ago, yes, man. Sir. Wait till this time, that's crazy. But, uh, oh, and this, man, I know you appreciate this. Cowboys ain't been good since. You damn right. You damn right. <laughs> Cowboys ain't been ain't been nothing Almost since. Almost three decades. They not America's team anymore. They Mexico's team. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, Bill Cowher, man, that's another one, man. That that's a great coach, man. A, a great coach. Great coach. Yeah. Great analyst. I love seeing oh, yeah, him on the morning he, shows now. He kills it on he CBS, was, too. He was one of the only ones that I seen uh, last year that was picking the Bucks to uh, to win. Um, in that Super Bowl, they was going through all the picks. Bill Cowher said, man, I got Tampa. And he was one of the only ones, man, that was down for Tampa, man. So I really appreciate him now. <laughs> um, then the 2021 class. Ooh, buddy. They had some big oh, yes, dogs sir. in that one. And one was a long time coming. Which one you said? My guy, Harold Carmichael. Fly Eagles fly. Man, Harold Carmichael ran to Cunningham. That's what got me in love with that team right there. Been in love since. Hey, for all of you guys out there, we don't care nothing about no Harold Carmichael. <laughs> Man, that sound like somebody that work and save a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's get into some real names, man. We got Peyton Manning, you know. Uh, easily top three all time. Uh, he's not better than the Tom Brady, but 
He's easily top three, man. A great, 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 great player, man. He, Definite first ballot. Oh, well yeah, deserved. man. This man has – he's really put on for the lead. Um, we got Calvin Johnson, Megatron. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. Man, hey, dude, look, this guy didn't play a whole lot of years, but he put up enough numbers. Right, right. And this guy was pure, raw talent. Well, and Man. I know you've seen it just came out where he said that he asked the Lions uh, to be released or traded, and they told him, nope, Hey, listen, the now? Lions are known for that. Ruining they did that Barry mystery. Sanders like that. Barry Sanders wanted to get traded. They said, nope, we will let you retire. We do not care. We will never let you play for anyone else. Mm -hmm. But Megatron, ooh, that boy was an animal. Yeah, and then and, they're crazy though. They're going to do it for Stafford, though. Send him on his way. Well, they did it for Stafford because they was just ready to move on. If, You're right. If Stafford You're right. was still in his prime and mm, playing great and, right. you know, hadn't had the injuries, they would have locked him in to um, Charles Woodson. That's another name. Man, man, man. That guy Bad right man. there. That guy can go Hall of Fame as a cornerback, and he can go Hall of Fame as a safety. That guy could do it all, man. Look, he could play pretty much every position out there, man. Yes, Free sir. safety, strong safety, corners, cover the slot. He can guard uh, – you know, he can cover tight ends, mm -hmm. uh, receivers. Heck, you could probably put him in a wide receiver and I, he would have showed up. That's a bad man. Bad um, man. You know, I had, I had to bring this name up, too. John Lynch. He's a name. Buh, 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 buh. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. John Lynch. Hey, Utah, that's a bad man, too, man. Whoo. All right. Something I seen on the internet. What you got for me? I seen this on the internet that said, who would you rather have on your team? Charles Woodson mm. or Troy Palomalu? Ooh. Ooh, 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 that's a good one. Uh, who you gonna a, build, who are you gonna build your defense around? Man, I'm gonna fire from the hip and I'm gonna say Woodson. Uh, just because of one of the things you mentioned, you play multiple positions, you put him at the safety, you put him at the corner, you put that man almost anywhere and he's going to make plays. Uh, Paul Malu's a bad man. That's no disrespect to him whatsoever. Uh, but I think he's a little more limited as a corner. His height wouldn't have done him some favors. He's probably got mossed on a few times. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go with Wood on that one. Yeah, man, I I agree. I go with Wood, Woodson, man. But, gosh, man, that, that's hard, man, because <laughs> I know watching watching the Steelers play, Troy Palomalu was all over the field. This man could be on one end of the field and will hunt you down <laughs> and take your head off on the whole other side of the field. Mm. He was in the backfield disrupting running backs and hitting quarterbacks. He was a bad man. Yes, so sir. It, that's a tough debate. So what I'm going to do for all of you out there, I need y'all to put in the comments, who would you rather Jog build your defense us. around? Troy Palomalu? Or Charles Woodson. It's a tough debate, so I really want to know what you guys have to say. Yeah, and don't yeah. just put the person's name. Put why you think that person. Yeah, give us a little reason, uh, man. We should be that guy. To hear. Man, that's a good one. Uh, that's a real good one. Now, while we are on, uh, oh, let's let's talk a little bit about Peyton before mm -hmm. we get to yeah, the next. Yeah, uh, yeah, we got to give Peyton his due. We got to give him his due. Did you see where Tom Brady said that? He had to come and, and sit in the section for Peyton mm -hmm. only to make sure that Peyton was really leaving and not ever coming <laughs> back. <laughs> yes, sir, I did see I that. I love it, man. Oh, I great. love it. And then uh, in the speech, you know how, you know, he talked a little bit uh, about Tom Brady and uh, oh, who else was it that he was talking about? Oh, I can't think of who it was, um, but he was talking about a defensive player. It, man, if you haven't seen the speech, go watch it, man. Yeah, Peyton Manning, one. It, one of the greatest we've ever seen, and not just on the field, but also off the field, man. He's a great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Not better than Brady, but a great guy. But while we're talking about football, man, 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 I don't know if you've seen, but Michael Thomas has Ooh. stopped answering calls from the New Orleans Saints. Mm -hmm. And now there's speculation that he might end up being traded. Um, all I'm gonna say, me being a Bucks fan, I think he got scared, wants to go somewhere else, get out <laughs> of the division. He don't wanna be around Tampa. He he got shut down when he did play against us. Uh, people can talk about the injury and all that, but if you're out on the field and you're playing, 
injuries don't matter anymore. Nope, if, you, if, nope. the, if, if you're out there, suck it up. We'll yeah, if, it, if you're injured, don't play. If you're out there on the field, I don't want to hear nothing about an injury. But uh, me, for real, uh, jokes aside, I would leave too. Mm, yeah, look who he's got throwing him the box. He's if, got two options. Now, and, uh, he you know, get his number. you got you got Jameis. Jame, Jameis can throw. Jameis can be good. Right. He just turns the ball over a lot. So he's going to make receivers look bad at times by mm-hmm. overthrowing yes, them or underthrowing throws, them. Or, you know, but then they got him back. They got Winston battling Taysom Hill, That's a man who this. can't throw. Right. So, and, you know, I keep reading that he's probably going to win the job and all that. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. So, no wonder Michael Thomas wants to go. His too. numbers are going to be horrible. You got a man that ain't, can't never throw you the ball? Like, I would run, too. <laughs> Send him on the Philly. Now, Send him on the Philly. <laughs> is, who do you think would actually go for Michael Thomas? Mm, and um, where do you think he would fit? And where do you think he would land? My off-the-hip answer is going to be the Green Bay Packers if they want that bad man to stay in that uniform next year. Uh, that would go a long way, I think, to help mend that relationship. Uh, realistically, uh, somebody like Oakland would be a good spot for him. Of course, you know, John Gruden's been trying to get a number one wide receiver since he shipped Amari Cooper out. Uh, and I would say team like the Niners. Shout out to my guy, Chris Jones. We hope your family and everything doing okay. We'll see you back next week. Uh, but yeah, I think they, they're in need of a number one for whoever their quarterback's gonna be this year. It don't matter who their quarterback <laughs> is. Um, I but be nice. but I, nah, for real, I, I just don't see the Saints uh, trade Michael Thomas to a team in the NFC. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I just don't see them doing it. I actually don't see them trading them to a contender. Um, you know, just out of spite, I think that they would end up trading him to a team like Jacksonville, yeah. somewhere like that. Um, you know, a young quarterback. Put him with Trevor. It. I mean, I I just don't see him trading them to somewhere that uh, to a team that's going to contend, especially in the NFC. Right. But uh, I don't know. He leaves. You know, makes it a little bit easier on my boys. Mm-hmm, yeah, he uh, definitely does. How long before he doesn't keep answering your calls, though, do you finally bite the bullet and get on with it? Or do you bite the bullet? It's I mean, true. you, could go you can hold it out and make, and make him feel like, uh, you know, do I want to play again or, or you know, That's retire? Point. That's a great point. You know, you never know. But he, I mean, he was great. A uh, couple years when he had breeze, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Uh, we'll see what he does with somebody else. Yeah, he might not be that guy anywhere else. <laughs> you know, I ain't no big fan. Uh, well, Slam boy. <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit. Uh, let's see. This is a good one. This is one for you. Oh, this is, we gonna get away. We gonna get away from football. Uh oh. And we gonna talk a little basketball. Uh oh. And you know this debate's been going on a little bit, and you know me and you had a little back and forth for a little bit about KD being a leader. Oh, you know, oh, uh, with KD uh, just leading the USA team to the gold. Uh, you know, a lot of people before them were saying that he's not a leader. And, Fact. you know, now KD fans mm-hmm. are now saying, you know, he's a, he showed that he's a leader. Do you actually think that KD is a leader? Yeah, I do. I don't think he's what you see as an outspoken leader. And he may not be uh, everybody's cup of tea as a leader. Um, but the first thing you look for as a leader is an example. Um, So, like I've said numerous times, I think that's the biggest way he leads is by example. Um, He's not going to ask you to do something he's not going to do himself. He's going to get in there and put in the work with you. Um, I think Devin Booker's comments about um, how they just followed his lead and and he really, you know, picked up the bag and went with it when they knew they needed somebody. Um, And a lot of y'all on here watching this said they wasn't even going to meddle. So I'm gonna need you to jump down in there in comments and say, I'm sorry, Drew. I'm sorry, KD. I was wrong. <laughs> Let's see, I know on the very first show of Spoken Minds, you know, I said that I thought the USA team was 
was this uh, in a little bit of trouble, but I do believe with them getting a holiday, Middleton and Booker, that it helped the team, especially Absolutely. Drew Holiday, because they were Definitely. missing that defensive perimeter player. And it helped them out. Now, my take on leadership is I I'm not gonna say I don't I don't really think KD's a leader. I think he is a great player. I I actually think that he's the best in the world right now. Yes, sir. Uh, but I don't think he's a leader. See, to me, it's two different things. Like, I look back at that Celtics team. Okay. I think that Rondo was the actual leader of the team. Okay. He wasn't the best player, but I think he was the leader. It was, if he goes, we go. Back with uh, Kevin Durant, or I'm sorry, not Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett, Paul Kevin Pierce. Kevin Garnett, Paul in. Pierce, Ray okay. Allen. Whereas the public perception would have probably been KG. Yeah, yeah he's but, more see, but like, like even the Suns team, like, Booker's the best player on the right. Suns. But he's clearly not the leader. But Chris Paul was the leader of the team. Right. So, I mean, you know, we're not there to see Ka right. how KD is in the locker room and, you know, we can't hear what he's saying on the court to other players. So he might be a vocal leader. It's, it's just hard for me to see it, but he's a, he's a great player. Now, see, like LeBron – I think is a great leader. Mm -hmm. He was he's always been a great talent also, but he is more of a leader than he is than he's better as a leader than he is as talent. Yes, sir. I understand like, what you're saying. So let me ask you, what would you say KD is lacking that would elevate him more? What would you want to see more out of, of KD before you could qualify him as a leader? I I want to see him make more players who aren't already stars. Better. better okay Let's make some of these some of these other players better like don't just be the guy that's scoring all the points and now these guys aren't having to do anything make them guys better Elevate put them in position put them in position <clears throat> to make uh to make plays on the offensive end okay uh, if someone does something and they do it wrong you can't be mad hollering you supposed to give me the ball give me the ball Fact. like that now as a great player, yeah, you want to have the ball, and they and they should have the ball. But as a leader, you can't be that way. Right. That's just my opinion. <clears throat> and I agree. Uh, one thing I will notice before we jump off the topic is um, I was watching <clears throat> the Nets Bucks series, of course, you know, before they lost. Uh, Joe Harris had an absolutely horrible series. Um, I don't think he could have shot any worse, man. Um, one of the game, I think it was game five or game six. Uh, Harris had missed a couple really big back-to-back -back shots. And what I saw was KD walked right over to him, put his arm around him, told him, keep shooting, we need you. Uh, it didn't end up working out. Joe Harris didn't end up elevating his game, and uh, it's well documented how my feelings on Joe Harris. Uh, but that's kind of what a side of KD I had never seen before. I didn't see that side of him in Golden State. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little bit in Oklahoma City, but they were all young. So, you know, it, they were all leading together. Well, see, this this playoffs, I mean, you know, he had Kyrie for a minute and then, mm -hmm. then uh, Harden ended up coming back, but Harden was playing hurt. So, with Harden playing hurt, KD was really having to do more, do a lot on his own, which he has never had to do before, really. Because right. in OKC, you know, he had great players around him and then – and Golden State, he right. had Great. Hall of Famers around him. But, uh, you know, this is the first time he he really had to really go out there and try to do everything. And, uh, and he was I a mean, big he, old toenail away I mean, listen, he, him in the finals. He, he's a great, great player. I, I just want to see him make more players around him better. That's, that's, that's all I need to see. That's fair. All right, let's get into this good old what the what. <laughs> what the what? What the what? The what the what of today is Dennis Schroeder. Man, man, man. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. Man, listen, if you guys ain't been seeing what's going on with this man, this man turned down a five-year, $84 million extension with the Lakers. 
because he was seeking a hundred million dollar contract. <laughs> this man played himself. Now this man just, uh, well, he's, you know, word is, is he's signing this contract. I don't know if it's officially went through, I think but uh, a one year, 5.9 million for the Celtics to be a backup. This man played himself. You straight played yourself. Man, I wish DJ Khaled was sitting right here right now to Congrats. say, you played yourself. <laughs> like, what in the world was you thinking? You really thought you were going to go get a $100 million contract? I remember when I heard that they that they that that the Lakers offered him $84 million. I said, what? Why? All right. <laughs> I was like, why? So what, what? what did he just want? Waste some money? Like, man, like, okay, I'm not saying that he's horrible. No, he's all right. He's, he's, he's an okay to... player. But now he done went to a team, he making less money than Alex Caruso. Man, he was feeling himself, too, because them nah, okay let players. let me say that one more time, man. <laughs> he is money. making less money than Alex Caruso, man. <laughs> That's, he played himself. Man, like he said. straight played himself, he man. Played I, himself. I wish I could say that in his language right now. <laughs> I wish I could say you played yourself in your language, Dennis. In the words of Chris Jones, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. Shame, shame. on you. Mm-mm-mm. Man, I, it, it, it's crazy, man. Played this man game. turned to $84 million? And he ain't going to get another and offer And got like 5.9? I don't care how good he does next year. He won't get that kind of offer. Again. Man, you you went so far down that next year, man, you might end up in the G League. <laughs> and the bad thing is, is these Gosh. okay players like Duncan Robinson, that is a, he's an okay player, real good shooter, not nothing special. But he just got like a $100 million contract. They are paying these okay players ridiculous money right now. And you played yourself right on out. And I, shout out to my guy Dre. I know he thought he had the leverage the whole time. But man, oh man, did he play himself. And you too, my guy. <laughs> man, that, that is crazy, man. Like, I just I just don't get it. Mm. 84 million, man, I would have been like, man. I don't know who was in his corner saying, man, you can you get better be fired. I mean, we can get you more. That's what I told my boss that this morning. Whoever his agent is better be gone. I'd have fired man, him listen. the minute I signed that 5.9. If my agent told me to turn down $84 million because he said we can get more and I end up getting stuck with 5.9, nah, I ain't firing him. You I'm beating him up. <laughs> Nah, for real. Fact. He got to get beat up. Yeah, you got to take one off the chin. Nah, for real. I'm calling everybody, I'm calling everybody in my family. Hey, man. We going to jump in. We got jumping. <laughs> Marcus and everybody. <laughs> we we got jumping. <laughs> All right, now, let's get into, I always say, I say this every week. It's my favorite segment of the show, the giving back segment, man. We love to give back to the Sorry. people from our community. And this week, we are giving back to my guy, my guy, Chris Hudson. Man, and if y'all don't know Chris Hudson, man, Chris Hudson has Life Journeys clothing. Man, this man started small, and this man has progressed into something big. He's, you know, he's from Lexington. Okay. Yeah, tell me a little bit about him. I don't know much. He, he's, he's from Lexington, man. He's a very smart, intelligent guy. Good guy, man. Uh, you know, raised in church. We, right, we were actually right. raised in the same church. But, uh, man, this guy started this clothing line. You know, like I said, it started small. And he started moving up. The man now travels all over the place. He does pop-up shops. He, had, he just opened... Uh, I don't know if you've seen in the background a second ago, he has uh, he has a truck, like a mobile truck. Okay. That, uh, like it's a mobile store oh, that, wow. he, uh, that he does. That's and then he up. does pop-ups all the time. Okay. The man's done got so, he's he's done got so big with this line that celebrities wear his stuff. I done, I done seen stuff with T.I. Oh, wow. I done seen stuff with 50 Cent. 50 Doing Cent did a video, did like a, a Instagram video one time that had, uh, had his clothing line. That's what's up. And then, That's what's uh, up. Recently, Rick Ross, there's a picture of Rick Ross on the internet. Uh, you can see it b behind Drew. Uh, 
Nope. You know, he's rocking the Life Journey shorts. Uh, man, Chris Chris has been doing it big, man. He he just had a pop-up shop at, uh, at Fayette Mall just a few days ago. Nope. Uh, you know, doing big things, man. He's, he's getting ready to do a pop-up in, I guess it's a couple of weeks uh, in right. Houston, Don't Texas. It, you know, he has a online, you can get on lifejourneys.com Life and order some stuff. Man, he has really yeah, good stuff, check man. It out, Chris. And he's a, you, and man. he's a really good guy, man. That's that's my dude, man. Uh I need to cop some more life journey stuff, man. It's it's been a little bit. Uh every time I get online to find the one thing that I'm looking for, it uh it's been sold out because it's selling so quick. Wow. Like that stuff sells so fast because it's so it big, good. Then. It's so, yeah, man. This Do guy, big. this Do guy, big, Chris Jones, guy. is a. I mean, not Chris Jones, Chris Hudson. <laughs> you miss definitely Chris. not Chris Jones. Jones. Definitely you not Chris you. Jones because I don't even like that guy. <laughs> but Chris Hudson, that's my dude, man. Hey, you keep doing big things, little bro. For real. Shout out, hey Chris. man. Keep doing look, it big, man. all respect from me, bro. For real. Man, keep doing your thing, man. You are going to be one of the hottest lines in the world one day. Sir. Man, you already, you already sink people all over these states, man. They People know you, and they know your clothing. And it's growing and growing. Keep putting in the hard work, bro. Um, I hope to see you soon, man. I, I'm hoping that you come down for uh, Roots and Heritage Festival if they let us have it this year, man. I hope you're down with a... Uh, with a booth, man, so I can come uh, holler at you. Come check but, you uh, out. Hey, Chris, like I said, man, love you, bro. Keep man. doing Salute. your thing, man. Uh, and when you see us, Chris, man, share this for me, player. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Uh, you know, we always close the show with a random rant. This random rant was set for was set just for Chris Jones because Chris Jones is real big on spaghetti is not a main dish that it is a side dish right. now me personally i think it could be a main dish or a side dish see i don't know how you look like in our culture right spaghetti is mostly a side dish oh, shit. to and it, and the main dish with spaghetti is usually fried fish Ooh, Have you ever good. had fried fish? Nah, but see, I need to come to a cookout with you, man. man. You need to need come to hang do. out with we us one time, good. man. Fried my culture, spaghetti is the main dish, and this normally comes with meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, now uh, there's fried fish on the side, and uh, uh, I mean fried fish, and there's spaghetti on the side, and it is so good, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, so for all of out. you guys who be saying that fried fish and spaghetti does not go. In the words of Chris Jones, shame on you. Shame on you. Now, I'm going to say it one more time. Shame on, on you. you. It is great together. But I also, you know, I'm biracial, so I got that other culture in me, too. So uh, I also have eaten it as a I main dish good. for a, a, a lot of years. Mm. Uh, but it definitely goes with fried fish, man. Ooh. I wish, I, look, I wish Jones was here with me and you today just so he could really go in because this this is the type of things that grinds his gears for real. <laughs> he gonna like, get on here next week talking about it. Like, nah, he, he might have stood up and walked off when I said something about I've eaten it as a main dish. <laughs> That's how upset this man would be. <laughs> oh, shout out hey, to my now, guy Jones. Now, for real, man. like I asked y'all earlier in the show to put in the comments of uh, about Palomalu and Woodson. But I want y'all to put this in the comments. Yes, sir. Do you think spaghetti is a side dish or a main dish or both? And have you ever had it with fried fish? And if you haven't, shame on you. I'm about to try me some. Go Next eat I get. spaghetti with some fried fish. Right. Hey, look, man, look. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for watching the show, Drew. I really appreciate hey, you, brother. Thank, Thank for you for me, coming. Man. Man, we, we're going to have to have you on the show again, anytime, anytime. especially when Chris is here, because I want you to really I got to get that Chris Jones look, experience. What me and you will do before that show is me and you will link up. We're going to talk and we're going to talk about how we're going to go in on Chris. All right. And yeah, we're going to let Chris Jones have it the we entire coming for you, show. Jones. We coming for you. The entire show. But, uh, you know, that's the show for this week. Hey, hey, make man. sure y'all click like, subscribe, share, every chance you get. We appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, thank you for tuning in on this lovely Thursday. 
We love you guys. Big 400. Peace.